Over the last four decades, Benihin has built himself up to be seen as a father in a Christian society, and one single picture on the account of Benihin could literally take your ministry to another level. But how significant is this when Benihin has cemented himself as a sheep in wool's clothing? From the prosperity gospel, I want you to go to the farm or online and sow a seed to the false prophecies and finally to the divorce. It'll probably kill about 5,000 people. That's what I felt from the Lord. And then it's gonna, it's gonna, gonna timber down, it'll be all done. Well, unfortunately, all things come to an end. So, this is the demise story of Pastor Benny Hinn, a prophecy worth hearing. How will they view me? I want them to view me as one who preaches the cross. I do not want to be known for prosperity. So the story began back in Israel where Ben Hinn was born, later moving to the States, and after an encounter with God, decided to dedicate his life wholly to the Holy Spirit, earning him the title a friend of the Holy Spirit due to his multiple encounters. He quickly confirmed his calling by getting the endorsements of grace ministers like Benson Nidahosa, Maurice Lulo, and more others, further moving on to the claim of inheriting the spirit of Catherine Coleman. I'm sure many of the people have heard the name Catherine Coleman, but I don't know how many of them had ever been to any of her meetings like I have. So many years later, being given the title of the world's most recognized faith healer due to his many healing crusades. But then, many years after the fathers of that generation passed on, Ben Hinn began to manifest a new dimension. That was the prosperity gospel. Christianity has become deluded. And, uh, you know, we got attacked for teaching prosperity. Well, it's in the Bible. Now Ben Hinn was known for his thousand dollar seed messages and a prosperity gospel that gave you the hope that giving money will be the key to activating your miracle and blessings. But unfortunately, it was not scriptural and it ended up causing a disaster like this. Expect the miracle. Dear Jesus, the Lord's gonna touch you, young boy. Days after the event and Ashneel still wasn't healed. It didn't happen, I was not even discouraged. I, I know it's God's plan. You know, I can stake my life on Pastor Benny Hinn's words. And God spoke to me last night at the, at the Colosseum Center where the crusade was going on and he said, donate him another $2,000 and which I'm going to do it. Now, the prosperity gospel was not the only thing he was known for, as many sick people who claimed to be healed were not actually healed. It was actually a placebo effect. And as I've watched your healing crusades, am I seeing anything that goes beyond placebo? I've wondered why sometimes someone comes in and comes out of a wheelchair and walks around, runs around, and hours later, they're back in that wheelchair again. Moving on, we have his many prophecies that unfortunately for one reason or the other were not fulfilled, with one being the COVID prophecy. I'll give you a little piece of news that I felt in my soul yesterday. Someone will come up for a cure for that coronavirus, guaranteed. I know it by the Holy Ghost, so relax. Okay? Just calm down. It'll probably kill about 5,000 people. That's what I felt from the Lord. And then it's gonna, it's gonna, gonna timber down. It'll be all done. Apart from this, he is also seen to have endorsed a lot of fake prophets in his age, with one being Thibi Joshua, Java, and more others, while paving a way for false prophets in this prosperity generation to flourish. This is how we will know, Papa, this is how we will know. Shh. This is how we will know that the ten are the ten, and others will weed themselves out. <laughs> Somebody said, wow. <laughs> Grab a seed of 1,000. If you have it, move forward. Move forward. But with all this, Benny Hinn is still respected among the Christian faith and is seen as a father to many. And in his early years, he wrote more inspiring books and messages that helped their generation. Recently also coming out to repent of her prosperity doctrine for over four decades. Prosperity has gone a little crazy. And I am correcting my own uh, 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 theology and you need to all know it. This confession shook the world, bringing knowledge of a changed Benny Hinn. But an update on him recently showed that some habits are just hard to get rid of. So do it today. Give with joy. God loves a cheerful giver. And so does Benny, as long as it is you giving to him. 
While recently, there's a lot going on with his health, which did not start today but seems to be worsening as the days goes by. With a recent prophecy from one of his endorsed sons, Java, who came out with a prophecy claiming his demise in 2024. I saw letter B and letter H, mighty men of God. I saw this one, the LT has been on and off and people don't know about this, but he has been experiencing that to one point he felt numb all over his face as if he's going through stroke and the heart started beating it was like and it's about to come back and another time you're trying to go into the shower there's a shake in your hand that is like you can feel you're about to die and in 2024 it's grace for you to pass it i'm a small boy i cannot cover you but i believe this is the will of god so the best way you can deal with this story Put yourself in the track with God because the last days are always the most difficulties to be perfectly walking with God and put things in order and make sure your doctrine is clean because your words and your doctrine shall be the script for the next generation. So with this prophecy, Ben Hinn has almost less than two years to live, according to the prophet. But what really mattered was his doctrine because a quick search on Google about Ben Hinn will give you this prosperity preacher, not a preacher of Christ, something he does not want to be known for after his death. Today I'm 67 years old, I'm thinking about how am I going to finish and what will I leave behind for the next generation? How will they view me? I want them to view me as one who preaches the cross. I do not want to be known for prosperity. I want to be known for someone who preached the cross of Jesus. Now to summarize all of this, despite these controversies that have raised ethical and theological concerns, including his faith, healings, and claims of financial prosperity, a death prophecy is the last thing to expect. And if this prophecy is true, then what half of the next generation will grow up knowing is Ben Hinn, a prosperity preacher who raised a generation of false prosperity preachers.